Stefan from the Royal Observatory of Belgium. And the talk will be on test of fundamental physics from the propagation of GNSS signals. Okay. No, it's not quite on. Okay. And the last one, please. So uh, my talk uh, will be the test of fundamental physics using the propagation uh, the of the Genesis signals. So as uh, it was recalled uh, in the first talk of this session, uh, the most part of the universe is actually un unknown and 24% uh, of the mass energy of the universe would consist in dark matter. And uh, therefore, there is a very large panoply of theoretical model which has been developed to account for the nature of dark matter. And there was a very interesting opportunity which has taken recently uh, in the literature, uh, as recalled also in the first talk of this session, is uh, why not twist some high precision devices on the earth to transform it into dark matter detectors. And it is an always winning strategy, just because if a signature is detected, oh, okay, it's very nice, it's a great discovery, but if there is no signature, it's nice too, because some families of models are rolled out. The question is that what family of models? Uh, so uh, we will this the, the, um, in this talk with an example of cosmological model uh, which predict a macroscopic structure which appears in the early ages of the universe and these structures are called topological defects. And there, there are different shapes. You have a sphere-like uh, monopole uh, string-like vortices and uh, plano-like domain walls. And uh, it's open a fascinating perspective if that because if such structures possess enough energy density to be dark matter candidate, it would cross regularly the trajectory of the Earth and so it would be accessible to measurement with devices, uh, high precision devices on Earth. And in this talk, uh, I will focus on the simplest case, the planar domain walls. And I will answer to a simple question, could such encounters affect the genesis signal and leave a signature in clock solutions? And my talk uh, will be twofold. First, uh, I will demonstrate how, how the generalization of Maxwell equation provides a test of fundamental physics with Genesis signals. And then uh, I will describe and quantify the perturbation we found by hypothetical domain walls on Genesis uh, signals. And I will describe a totally novel phenomenology which is quite interesting. I will start uh, from uh, something which is well known in uh, literature and textbooks. I will start from a generalized formulation uh, of Maxwell equation which is uh, system free and so that aim to be independent of any system of units. And so it requires the introduction of four empirical constant with dimension relative to units of electromagnetism. So for example, uh, you know the Hell's law, uh, which states that an electric charge density generates an electric field. And so you have a constant K1. Uh, we make the link between the charge units and the electric field unit. Of course, we should obey the physics law, and therefore the constant K uh, should verify uh, the special relativity, 
and the continuity equation. To be brief, in the continuation equation, in continuity equation, you have the fact that one ampere is equal to one coulomb per one second. And so you have a re re relations between the k parameter and hence only two constants are independent. And then uh, if you convert into the SI system, you recover the vacuum absolute permittivity and the vacu vacuum absolute permeability. And so let us consider um, this relation between uh, K parameter and uh, we make uh, only a very simple assumption is to figure out that these relations are violated. And even worse, we have introduced the fact that the parameter could be also space-time dependent. There are some consequences. First, is the continuity equation holds again? Is there, in that case, a violation of spatial relativity? Uh, this governed by, uh, for example, a beta parameter? And is there a variation to a defined structure constant? Um, to be brief, um, uh, such a variation would imply that the strength of electromagnetism could vary uh, in different points of space. And it is on that last configuration uh, that case we will focus on. And so, as you know, the Maxwell equation describes the emission and the propagation of Genesis signal. And as I have just shown, if you track variation of the constant K, it allows us to make tests of fundamental physics. But now, if you, uh, you show this equation to an engineer in electromagnetism, he will say, okay, at microscopic scale, if I see this function K, it will describe a non-inhomogeneous medium in which the electromagnetic waves propagate. And so if you uh, see some disturbance on Genesis signal, it could provide a test of fundamental physics um, at microscopic scale, for example, hunting for dark matter. And so um, we make the calculation and we obtain in the case of domain wall that the constant K1 and K2 are equal, the function K1 and K2 are equal and are directly related to the dark matter field and also to another parameter which is in particle physics is called energy scale and this par parameter lambda quantifies the effect of dark matter on the electromagnetism. And now, if you make the interpretation in the SI system, you have that at the macroscopic scale, a variation of the, the absolute permitti permittivity could be related to uh, models, the underlying models describing a dark scalar field. Dark, uh, da like uh, dark matter domain walls. So the conclusion is that first con is if the Earth crosses domain walls, the Genesis signal should be affected by a variable permittivity and a variable permeability. And as you know, perhaps in the new SC system, the fact of the permittivity at the classical level should be a measurable quantity is quite uh, controversial. And here we give a nice interpretation on this measure since the measure of vacuum permittivity should, could be a test of fundamental physics. So we will consider that the permittivity vary only in one direction, we record it Z, Z, and um, solving the Maxwell equation, we can find a modified plane wave solution. 
So here we have uh, the first order uh, damping factor. And then we have a phase, which can be the phase uh, of the carrier of the Genesis signal, with a uh, first part that's the normal plane wave propagation with the associated component of the wave vector. But also in the phase, you would have a perturbation at the second order. And so looking at this perturbation on the phase, it will uh, provoke an extra time delay on the signal propagation. And the origin of this time delay is twofold. First, uh, is you will have a phase shift related to the position of the receiver and the emitter in the light of sight, line of sight. And then uh, describing the fact that the wave vector is position dependent, you will have a bending trajectory. And so it will imply an extra time delay. And um, you can make some analogy too with uh, tropospheric or ionospheric effects in propagation of signals. But I will pass this. Okay. And so, sorry, go back. You have in the perturbation of phase, you have two parameters. And for each parameters, parameter, you have two effects, phase shift and bending of the trajectory. So in total, you will have four effects on Genesis signals. I will start with the description of the phase shift of the signal. You have a first effect here where you will have um, um, phase measurement, a perturbation in the carrier phase measurement only when the domain wall uh, transit uh, in across the emitter and when the domain wall transit uh, along uh, the receiver. Then you have a second effect. In this case, the effect is cumulative. So you will measure uh, a phase uh, perturbation at the level of the receiver during all the transit of the domain wall uh, between the emitter and the receiver. And so if you want to uh, have a better idea of what's happened. Go. Sorry, I have a problem. Sorry, I had an animation, but it doesn't work. I will, we will try it later. Uh, the third effect is uh, related to, to the bending of the trajectory. And so uh, in that case, uh, you, have a, you will see a curvature of the trajectory. Uh, that means that the signal will uh, travel so long an extra distance and this uh, effect is independent of the size of the domain wall. And that's interesting because you can uh, search for domain wall which has the size of the carrier wavelength. You have a fourth effect on the signal propagation uh, related to the bending of the trajectory with, in that case, also um, a modification of the apparent position of the emitter uh, in a, um, uh, versus the receiver. And so if you analyze the order of magnitude, so uh, first of approximation scheme is valid from transfer size of domain wall uh, of, uh, so the, the order of magnitude of the carrier wavelength. And the effect should be measurable for transverse size of domain wall up to the scale of the solar system. 
And if we consider typical data we can find in the literature, for example, in the cold model of dark matter, uh, we can um, see two uh, graphs here that I made. Um, here we, it represents the expected uh, projected uh, influence of the domain wall on the electromagnetism and signal propagation. Here I make a plot on the time delay versus the energy scale. It means that if you reach a given sensitivity in the time delay, uh, it will be associated to a new constraint on the model, and this constraint will be on the energy scale. And for a recall, this energy scale quantify the influence of domain wall on electromagnetism. And this is another plot, uh, always projected model, when I plot uh, the size of the domain wall as an horizontal axis, but you could consider too that we can reach even more large uh, size of domain wall for the measurement. So the conclusion is that uh, of my talk, uh, we have introduced a new method making the link between fundamental physics and the phenomenology of the signal propagation. Then uh, we apply it in the very simple case of a transient domain wall dark matter. And finally, we assess a measurable time delay uh, in Genesis signal. And so uh, this work opened the way towards a new method of test of fundamental physics from the propagation of Genesis signals. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>